what we're going to be going over here is issuing stock with preemptive rights. That's where you protect the existing stockholders from any involuntary dilution of their ownership interest. So what are we talking about here with preemptive rights? Now these preemptive rights they protect the shareholders interest in the corporation here from being reduced by in by the issuance of any additional stock without their knowledge and prices that would be unfavorable to them. So what we're going to be going over here is just a very basic example here where we're going to be starting with our liabilities and stockholders equity here. Now I'm going to be showing before and after here. The before represents what's currently sitting here on the books of this uh, closely held company and we're going to have some liabilities here and uh, 100,000 capital stock of 500,000 and then we're going to have retained earnings here of 344,000. So uh, what's going on here with these preemptive rights here and we're going to be looking at it in these terms here. Um, after here, we're looking at after here. What the company is going to do is they're going to issue 200,000 additional dollars here in capital stocks. They're going to, it's going to increase from 500,000 up to 700,000. And what we're going to be concentrating on is this increase here in this capital stock, how it, how it was issued to these stockholders. So our liabilities and our retained earnings are, are going to be the same here after this issuance as they were before here. So our total amounts here I'm showing here for the uh, liabilities and stockholders equity here are shown 944,000 here before you have to subtract out your liabilities to determine your uh, stockholders equity here so you'd have to do that for both here before and after so what are we talking about here let's go down and look at our closely held corporation a here and looking at the stock ownership here so this is the way it's broken down here we have this president here of the company he owns 80 percent here of the stock in a company and then the remaining amount is split between a retired shareholder here B who owns 10% and then some family members here will identify them as C that own the other 10% so that accounts for a hundred percent of the uh, stock here that's uh, held by this that by this closely held company here how it's broken down and that's the current percent of the ownership here now what we're talking about here is this $200,000 uh, increase here in our capital stock. So it's done in this fashion here where the President A here issues capital stock par value here at $200,000 to himself for cash here. That is he put cash into the company here and he's uh, taking out this capital stock or it's recorded in his name here at $200,000. So that's where we're going to come into this preemptive rights here. And that's where retired stockholder B here objected to the claims that his interest is injured through not offering the stock based on preemptive stock rights. What a retired a stockholder B is saying that, hey, I should have had a chance here to buy into this, uh, into this stock here. Uh, president, the president issued himself here stock. I should be able to buy into it at uh, my ownership interest. So let's go and look at what we're talking about here. Again, looking at our stock distribution here. We had the 80% to the president and then retired uh, stockholder B will concentrate on him here at 10% and then family members at 10%. So our stock here uh, currently before this uh, additional issue we're sitting at 500,000. So total amount here before uh, this uh, th this additional 200,000 was issued. Uh, President A would be getting 80% here for 400,000 and then retired uh, uh, stockholder B here and uh, family members C here would both be getting 50,000 or they would be having capital interest here at 50,000. Total capital interest here is 500,000. Now this is where President A here stockholder A goes out and he issued himself two hundred thousand dollars worth of additional stock here that was there was, that was allowed here because there was a, a number of share or at least there was a total dollar amount there uh, that was able to be issued here or declared by the board of directors that could be issued so president A goes out and gives himself two hundred thousand here but the argument is here that the um, uh, retired uh, st shareholder B here and C didn't get a chance to buy in. They didn't because they, the preemptive rights were voided or they didn't follow, President A didn't follow them here. So uh, retired member B here after the issue and family member C here had zero. They in, had zero contributed here. They didn't have be allowed to buy into it. So after this um, stock here was issued to 200,000, President A here 
his amount of share in the capital stock here increased from 400,000 to 600,000 by that 200,000 uh, amount of stock that he per capital stock that he purchased. So looking at it in terms of his increase in ownership here, President A, 200,000 over the increase here over the 400,000 that he held before the issuance here, that was a 50% increase here in President A's um, ownership of the company here. So, and retired B here, well, they didn't have any increase in their ownership. So, after words here, uh, President A here has 600,000 of the total amount here that's outstanding, increased by 200,000 up to 700,000. So that brought up President A here up to an 85.7% ownership here. And a retired uh, stockholder B and the family member C here, that knocked their percentage down here. Again, 50,000 in each case here over the total uh, capital outstanding of 700,000 brings them down to 7.1% each year. Okay, so you can see what's happened here. We have an imbalance here. President A here increased his share from 80% here up to 85.7% 85 based on that stock that was issued to him. And that, uh, since there was none additional interest here uh, issued here to uh, stockholder B and C here, it knocked their interest in the company down from 10% here down to 7.1%. So this is where the argument comes in with preemptive rights. With preemptive rights, both retired B and uh, uh, st uh, retired stockholder B here and the family member C wanted to be able to buy in to keep their interest proportionate to uh, keep it everything even keel here. Each, if, if they were able to buy in, they would have ended up here with the same uh, percentage ownership uh, before here, after as they had before. So here's the imbalance. We have that. So we can look at it, um, how this uh, uh, retired B claims he was injured here. And we'll just look at it in terms of the book value here. So the book value of the cop capital stock. So before the issue here, uh, the book value was sitting at 844000 here. And uh, that was really the common stock plus the retained earnings minus any liability. So you can go back and look at that. It's going to come up to 844000 times his 10% ownership. That means his book value here was sitting at $84,400. Now after the issue here, he ends up with only 7.1% ownership in the company. The uh, book, uh, they retained capital stock and retained earnings here increased by 200,000 up to 1,044,000. So he ends up with, after the issue here at the 7.1% interest, he ends up with a book value here of $74,100. So this is where he claims he was injured here because he had $84,400 here. He ends up with $74,100. So he uh, retired member B here uh, lost or shareholder B here lost in book value here, $10,300. And that was because of the involuntary dilution of the ownership interest. So we're going to go and we look at, look at how this could be corrected here with retired member B here. So he's, he's definitely lost money here based on the book value of the company. Okay, so let's go up and look at our solution here. So preemptive stock rights allows each owner to purchase stock to retain the same proportionate interest in the corporation for any new issues of stock in the same class. So we're really only talking about one class here in our example. So that's that's what we're talking about with preemptive stock rights here. So the, this is the case here. If one uh, stockholder purchases a 50% additional amount here is, is with our in our example here, each of the other stockholders should also be able to purchase 50% additional uh, capital here of the company or additional capital that's being issued here by the company. So the imbalance through the preemptive stock rights can be corrected by issuing other owners capital stock equal to, in this case, 50% of their present holdings. Um, President A here, or shareholder A, increased his by 50%. So the other shareholders should also be able to increase their holdings by 50%. That's providing they go out and buy the or pay for the additional stock here. But they have to be at least given the, that offer here to, uh, through preemptive stock rights. So here, let's look at our closely held corporation here. Um, 
after we've made this, uh, where we're looking at in terms of the preemptive stock rights. So we started out with the same uh, 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 case here, where President A owned 80 percent, and then each of the retired members had 10 percent. Then the original uh, current stock issue here was at 500,000, and then we looked at it uh, before here. It was allocated 80 percent here to President 400,000, and then we had 50,000 here for each of the other stockholders, B and C here, based on that 10 percent ownership. Now, this is where the preemptive rights came in here. So President A, he uh, took out, he paid 200,000 in cash, he took out 200,000 in capital stock here. So he ends up the same as he did before here. 400,000 before plus the 200,000 additional issues, he's got 600,000 now. Now with the preemptive rights here, both retired uh, stockholders B and family members C each can buy in at the 50% owners, owners increase in 50% here. So they had 50,000 each year in stock. So looking at the 50% increase here uh, times the 50,000 shares here that they are stock, capital stock they currently own, the increase would be here $25,000. Now again, this 50% here is this, uh, based on the fact that President, it should have been President A here, uh, increased his uh, stock ownership by 50%. So same things goes with the other owners here, 50%. So here's what we have here. Uh, with the preemptive rights here, retired member B here and family member C each contributed 25000 here in cash. They get 25000 out in the capital stock. So they increased before they were sitting here at 50000 Now they add another 25000 to their ownership. So afterwards, they got 75000 here, both B and C in ownership. So total amount we're sitting here uh, after the preemptive rights were uh, preemptive rights allowed them to buy this extra shares, we're sitting at $750,000 in capital stock. So this is where we get bring our imbalance, our, correct our imbalance. So here is where 600000 here for President A divided by the total amount here, 750000 gives them that 80% uh, ownership interest here. Same as what he had before here, uh, before the uh, stock issue here. And after, with the preemptive rights, he ends up with 80%. Based on the fact that both retired B here and retire and uh, family member C uh, stockholders here were able to buy in at their proportional amount here. So, And then for each B and C here, uh, 75,000 total shares that they have capital stock they own divided by the 750,000 gives them that 10% ownership. So here's where we corrected our balance here through the preemptive stock rights here. So with preemptive stock rights here, when President A went out and bought here that additional $200,000 worth of uh, stock based on the fact that he had um, made a 50% increase here in his ownership here from 400,000 up to 600,000. That with the preemptive rights here, both retired shareholder B and family member C here also are allotted a 50% increase in their stock uh, increase here. So they were sitting at 50,000. 50% 50 increase brings them up to 75,000, both for retired B and retired C. So you can see how we corrected our imbalance. So that's what we're talking about with preemptive stock rights. So one um, um, shareholder gets to increase his by a specific percentage here, then the other shareholders are also in, be able to increase their capital stock or ownership in the company by the same percentage. And that was the, if based on that 50% increase here from President, it should have been President A here. But there's where we come up with our preemptive rights. So now let's just look at our book value, retired B, after these preemptive rights here. Uh, based on the preemptive rights. Again, before the issue, we were sitting at 844,000 times at 10% ownership. So we had uh, for, uh, would have been 84,400 here for the book value. Now, after the increase here, this is the case here where we actually increased it by 250,000 here in capital stock. Two, uh, uh, excuse me, it should have been like 350,000 here. 200,000, let's look at it. 200,000 went to President A here and then an extra uh, 25,000 here went to uh, retired B and retired C. So that brought it up to two, uh, 250,000 here, total increase. So that brings us up to our common stock plus a retained earnings of 1,094,000 times the 10%. That gives us 
y, uh, for book value retired B, 109400 So he had a gain in his book value here by $25,000. And that's where you get this preemptive rights. The proportionate ownership has been restored here. Okay, so that, that takes care of it with our preemptive rights. Just remember, uh, when you have the preemptive rights here, we can go back to our little diagram here. Whatever you start out with your ownership percentage here, and we had it broken down between uh, shareholders A, B, and C here. After, with the preemptive rights, each of the shareholders should be able to buy in at whatever percentage is assigned here for additional shares that are being outstanding. And afterwards here, they should end up with the same percentage ownership in the company here based on their contributions that are made. Okay, so that takes care of our um, preemptive rights here, uh, stock rights. Now, remember, we just looked at it, a closely held company here for an example here, but you can see how this could um, affect any company here if the stock has preemptive rights. Well, uh, most of the time here, uh, corporations uh, don't uh, include, uh, their stock isn't doesn't include preemptive rights, so then they can issue it as they please uh, for easy stock exchange and that. But if the stock for a particular class has preemptive rights, then you have to follow that proportional rule here on the number of sh additional shares that uh, uh, owners can buy in. They have to buy in at the same percentage uh, between the ownership here. Whatever that percentage is, they should be able to buy in at that percentage. Okay, so here we've just talked about our preemptive stock rights here and how it affects the percent ownership in the company.